Introducing Pat McFarden MP for Wolverhampton South East. Pat was born in Scotland in 1965 and grew up in Glasgow as the youngest of seven children. He studied politics at Edinburgh University before working as a researcher for MP Donald Dewar. In 2005, he was elected as MP for Wolverhampton and has since been serving the community. So uh, Pat is, of course, a well-known face for the British Sikh community. He stood by the Sikh community many a time, and once again, he's raised Sikh concerns in the House of Commons and subsequently across the world. So thank you very much for joining us, Pat, again. And uh, now today, we will be talking about the recent story of the disclosure of declassified letters in which it's claimed that the UK had a hand in the massacre on the Golden Temple in 1984. But uh, first, can we have the clip of Pat asking the Prime Minister about the inquiry. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, the Prime Minister will be aware of the grave concern among British Sikhs about the reports in recent days of UK involvement in Operation Blue Star to storm the Golden Temple. He will also be aware that the broader events of 1984 in India resulted in the death of thousands of innocent Sikhs and that this has left lasting grief and pain in the Sikh community here in the UK and around the world. This is an open wound which will not heal until the full truth is told. So can I ask him on the process he has set up whether he will ensure there is full disclosure of all government papers and information from that time and that there is also, following that, a proper statement in this House where ministers can be questioned about this. Mr. I think, uh, first of all, can I agree with him about the deep scars that this event left and the incredibly strong feelings that exist to this day. And as I say, anyone who visits the Golden Temple at Amritsar and sees what an extraordinary place of peace and tranquility and what an important site it is for the Sikh religion knows how powerful uh, uh, th this, this point is. We're going to make sure this inquiry is held properly. Its findings will be made public, which I think is vitally important. As I say, in the end, I don't think anyone should take away uh, the responsibility for these events with the people who are properly uh, responsible for them and I'm sure the inquiry will find that. In terms of holding a statement and revealing this information and the findings to the House, I'll listen carefully to what he says but I think a statement might well be the right approach. <laughs> David Cameron, Absolutely. So, um, Pat, you actually asked the Prime Minister about the inquiry and if the inquiry, uh, if you could, uh, he could ensure actually the full disclosure of the papers after the inquiry. Do you think um, that his answer was adequate? Do you think it was appropriate? Well, I asked him two things. Yes. Uh, this is a very serious issue, of course, for sure. British Sikhs and for Sikhs around the world and uh, you know I represent uh, many many uh, Sikhs in Wolverhampton South East and I've learned just how painful a period this was for uh, for the Sikh community and I think one of the reasons it is such a painful period is not just the huge loss of life that took place but also the lasting sense that the full truth has never been told yes uh, and I think that adds to the sense of pain and injustice over this period. So when documents were released earlier this week under the what they call the 30-year rule, which is the sort of secrecy rule for government documents in the UK, after 30 years, many, but not all documents are, are released. When documents were released that appeared to show that advice had been sought and possibly given from the UK in advance of the Operation Blue Star, the storming of the Golden Temple, uh, I and other MPs were, were very concerned. Um, and so I asked two things of the Prime Minister. First of all, that there be full disclosure of the government, UK government, information from that period. Sure. And secondly, that following that, there be a proper statement in the House of Commons so that MPs like me and other MPs who have a strong interest in this area could question ministers on the contents of those papers. Now the Prime Minister said he thought there might be a case for a statement. He was a little bit more reticent to be honest on the full disclosure. Mm -hmm. He said there would be a, 
a review of this, which he's asked the Cabinet Secretary to do, and that the conclusions of that would be made public. But that's not quite the same as the full disclosure of all the information that I was asking for. So I think there's still a job to do to press the government on exactly what happened here, what advice was given, who authorised it, yes. did the Cabinet know, uh, at what level was really quite an important foreign policy decision uh, taken, uh, because it was a decision that has had a lasting impact uh, on relations between the Sikh community and India, yes, uh, of course. but also we should remember uh, Sikh communities, and you know we're talking about anniversaries this year. Uh, this is the 30th anniversary of 1984, but it's also the 100th anniversary of the First World War, and yes. that gives us cause mm -hmm. to remember that the Sikh community has been very loyal to the UK, exactly. uh, has served, fought, and died in two world wars, uh, has been very valiant uh, in the UK armed forces. So we're talking about a community here with a, a strong record of, of loyalty uh, to this country. Absolutely, mm. yes, of course. And um, I mean, so I suppose David Cameron's answer wasn't as uh, clear as you would have liked it. But he did actually give a message to the Sikh community. And can we now please have that official message that David Cameron gave? What happened at Amritsar in 1984 led to a tragic loss of life and must never be forgotten. I know that 30 years on from this dreadful incident, it remains a source of deep pain to Sikhs everywhere. Last year, I went to the Golden Temple and I saw for myself its beauty and its calm and what a special place it holds in the heart of Sikh people around the world. I completely understand the concerns that the documents raise, which is why as soon as I heard about them, I asked the Cabinet Secretary to urgently look into the role played by the UK Government and to establish the facts. That process is underway and I'd like to reassure the public, especially the Sikh community here in Britain and around the world, that the inquiry will be thorough, it will be transparent and it will get to the truth. So of course um, we've just watched obviously David Cameron's message there uh, to the Sikh community and um, he actually said that he understands the concerns that were raised and uh, uh, Pat what do you think of David Cameron's message to the Sikh community? Well I think we've got to continue to press on the two points. Yes. Uh, the full disclosure of what happened, uh, you know, what was done by the Conservative government of the time sure. uh, in 1984. Um, and uh, whether ministers can be asked about it. I mean, in his statement, he is acknowledging the importance of this issue to the Sikh community, mm. and I think it's quite right that he does that. Uh, but if he understands the importance of it, then I think it's really important that he follows through on these two points. You see, what I come back to time and time again on this is that one of the things that has um, caused this to be of such... Uh, lasting grief and pain and I described it in the House of Commons as a, a wound that has not healed. One of the reasons for that is this sense of um, uh, secrecy around it. Now up until now that's really been directed at India but here we have revelations of uh, potential UK uh, yes. involvement in this. There appears to have been some kind of request and the papers that have been released so far indicate that there was a positive response to that but I'd like to know the full truth. Of course. And I think my constituents, British Sikhs, here in the UK, loyal to this country, they also want to know the full truth. So I think it's one thing to acknowledge the pain, and it's absolutely right that the Prime Minister does that. Definitely. Um, but we've got to do more than acknowledge the pain and press for the full truth to be told. I mean, in relation to the documents that were released, um, do you think that they indicate complicity um, of the UK government's involvement in the tragedy of 1984 and also because um, a view that has been taken uh, by a significant uh, sector of the Sikh community um, that the letters in question in fact um, actually uh, indicate a joint enterprise between the UK and India? I mean, what do you think about that? Well, I think they certainly raise serious questions for um, viewers who are not familiar with the content of this. What the documents uh, show is the UK government saying there has been a request for some kind of advice uh, on dealing with the situation that was in the Golden Temple at the time and that an SAS officer had been sent to India uh, to, uh, to give 
some kind of advice on this. Secondly, they also show that the Conservative government of the time um, were aware that if this became public, it could be hugely sensitive uh, in the Sikh community here in the UK. So there was also in the documents that have been released an expression of concern about this becoming public. So what I want to know, having read that much, is did the SAS officer go? If he did, was he accompanied by any others? What advice was given? Was the advice taken? And critically, at what level was that decision approved? Was it approved by the Foreign Secretary? Was it approved by the Prime Minister of the time? Did the Cabinet know? So we know certain things from the government, uh, documents that have been released, but they also beg a lot more questions about what exactly uh, did the UK government do in response to this request, and at what level was that approved? And as I say, I, I really can't overemphasize um, the importance of this to uh, British Sikhs here in the UK and indeed around the world. Yes. Um, uh, and the sensitivity uh, of this issue. Uh, I think it's obvious to viewers of the Sikh channel, but it's probably not until now been obvious to everyone else in the UK. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's quite interesting that you raise uh, these questions. And do you think that after, after the inquiry is, is actually done, do you think that these questions will be answered, these questions that you've just asked? I mean, um, did an SAS officer did go to India? Did, was, did, was he accompanied by anyone? Do you think these questions will be answered by the inquiry? Well, I hope so. And uh, what the Prime Minister has done is... Um, he has asked uh, Sir Jeremy Haywood, who's the Cabinet Secretary, the lead civil servant in the country, uh, to look into this matter. And I hope that Sir Jeremy also understands the importance of this uh, and that he um, gives a full uh, report on what happened, which doesn't sweep anything under the carpet, doesn't show any secrecy, uh, and that then ministers uh, can be asked uh, about this because... Uh, you know, I don't know if you can ever heal a wound um, such as has existed for 30 years on this issue. But I know one thing, secrecy and cover-ups make it worse. Sure, um, of course. How long will the inquiry take? The Prime Minister hasn't said. He's said, talked about uh, he wants this done as soon as possible. I think that's right. To be honest, I think the longer this takes, the more questions that will be asked about it. Uh, so I think it's in everyone's interest, including the government's, uh, to have this done as soon as possible. Definitely, and this was actually a domestic Indian matter, um, which was really of no relevance to the British people. So why do you think that um, the UK government took it upon themselves and sought to get involved um, in that matter? I mean, especially given the sacrifices of the Sikh community um, and the fact that um, the Sikh community gave their lives in both world wars, as you've mentioned, of course, uh, for the sanctity well, and the safety of this country. I think that's a really good question. Um, obviously, there is a long and close relationship between the UK and India. Yes. You know, we are countries with a very strong friendship. You know, I count myself as a friend of India. Yeah. Uh, I've visited several times. Uh, I, too, have been to the Golden Temple um, and found it, a, you know, a tremendously moving experience. Yes. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think there's uh, any question about the long-standing relationship between Britain and, the U uh, between Britain and India. Um, but as to why uh, the UK government should have acceded to a request uh, of that nature, I think that's another question entirely. Because even though there is a close relationship between the two countries, even the documents that have been released show that there was an awareness uh, in the UK government of the time of the sensitivity of this uh, among the Sikh community yes. here in the UK. So this was not a, a small decision you know, no. to accede yes. to such a request. This was a very important decision, which had ramifications both in India and, of course, for, as it turns out, for uh, the whole Sikh community around the world, which remains to this day extremely pained, not just by the storming of the Golden Temple, although that is obviously enormously important given it's the, the most holy place in the, in the Sikh faith, but also the broader events uh, of that year which saw uh, thousands of innocent people lose their lives. Yeah, of course. And I mean generally, generally in the Sikh community now, I don't think that they're feeling uh, angry. I think the, the mood is betrayal, is one of betrayal. and. Um, 
obviously about these uh, revelations. And I think they're actually feeling largely disappointed due to the fact that um, the Sikh community had so much respect uh, for the British and for the British government as well. And um, you're more than uh, well aware of the glorious terms in which Winston Churchill spoke um, about the Sikhs. And what would you like to say in, in regards to this? Well, I've uh, discussed this matter with um, community leaders in Wolverhampton in recent days, as you'd yes. imagine in my own uh, constituency. Um, I think the mood is one of, of, uh, of disappointment, um, yeah. of bewilderment, uh, of wanting answers, uh, and I quite understand that. And I'll be speaking to people, you know, over the course of the next uh, uh, day or two about this. I think what you say about uh, the strong relationship between the Sikh community and the UK is absolutely right. Winston Churchill did praise the Sikh community, uh, and quite rightly so. And as I said uh, a few minutes ago, we're in a year of anniversaries, and this year in particular, on the 100th anniversary of the First World War, we are remembering the valiant and brave and very loyal service that was given by many Sikhs to the UK at its time of greatest need in those two yes. world wars. Uh, and I think it's really important to understand that. This is a, a community which is not only successful and uh, a key part of the modern United Kingdom, uh, but it's also one that's been very loyal historically to the United Kingdom. And I think it's really important to remember that. Definitely. And what can um, the Sikh community now do um, in regards to the inquiry? What can they do now? Uh, will they just wait for the answers or is there anything that they can do to assist? Well, anything? I think there are lobbies of Parliament uh, planned. I think there's going to be a lobby next week. Um, I'm sure that in constituencies like Wolverhampton South East and others where there is a strong Sikh community, people will quite rightly uh, ask their MPs to keep up the pressure on the government. Uh, to ask for full disclosure, to ask for the possibility of uh, cross-examination and to try to get to the full truth. And I'm sure that that will be done uh, in the best traditions of the community, in a peaceful and democratic way, using the, uh, the freedoms that we have uh, to ask questions, to press for answers, uh, and in the best spirit of our democracy. And um, I think that's what will happen, and I very much hope that's what happens. Definitely. Hanji, yes. Um, so, of course, uh, thank you for all of that information, uh, Pat McFadden. We really do appreciate you sharing us with that. I mean, it's important that the Sikh community stays with this story and this, uh, the, the revelations do come out. And, uh, um, I mean, if we go on to uh, your now, your life story, um, how did you actually become an MP and why did you decide to go into politics? Well, I'd, um, I'd worked in politics for a long time. Um, despite my uh, Scottish accent, I came <laughs> to England uh, quite a long time ago, over 20 years ago. Yes. Uh, and I worked in politics. I worked for uh, the Labour leader, John Smith. Yes. And then I worked for a long time for Tony Blair when he was Prime Minister, uh, both before he became Prime Minister in opposition and then in number 10. And um, in 2005, uh, my predecessor, uh, Dennis Turner, stepped down quite close to the election. It was a last minute decision for me. Uh, I didn't have connections with Wolverhampton uh, before I was selected there, although I had lived in England for a long time. Uh, and I went for the selection uh, and was selected as the candidate. And so I am. Um, uh, I came into, I became an MP really as a result of a last minute decision, but on the back of quite a long career in politics at the national level in number 10 as the political secretary to the, the, the Prime Minister. So worked very closely with him, uh, in, especially in the first two terms of, uh, of the Labour government. Sure, and if you hadn't have uh, gone into politics and uh, you didn't go down this route, what do you think you'd uh, see yourself doing? Oh, I don't know. Uh, you know, um, you, you, you follow your passions, you follow what you're interested in in life. Mm. And I've always uh, certainly been interested in politics, though never always thought I would necessarily become an MP. I did other things. I was a speech writer. I was a sort of behind the scenes guy uh, for uh, many years. Who knows, maybe I'd have gone into business or journalism or writing or, or something like that. I've always been interested in ideas. I've always been interested in causes. Um, and uh, so I guess politics is 
is the place for for someone like that who wants to change things and who sees things and wants to to make a difference to them. So I've been very lucky to get a chance. Uh, the community I represent in Wolverhampton South East is a great community. Obviously, we've been talking about the Sikh community today, but it's a very diverse constituency. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have a lot of faiths there. Uh, we have a very a traditional manufacturing workforce who are very proud of the industrial uh, heritage of the area. And the big task is, in, a, in, in an area like that, that's been through some tough times, is the hinge between the past and the future. We know it's got a great industrial past. Some of that's gone now. Sadly, a lot of that's gone. What are we going to do for a living in the future? So one of the issues, for example, I've been most passionate about since becoming an MP is improving school standards. You know, this is so important. There is no... A better way to increase somebody's opportunity and chances in life uh, than to improve school standards. And the truth is, in my constituency, they haven't always been as good as they should be. So I've been quite a strong voice for saying we've got to do better. We've got to be more ambitious for local children. We've got to increase their opportunities because I don't believe that children in Wolverhampton South East are any less smart or any less capable than children elsewhere. They of deserve course. as good an education as anyone. Definitely. And I am a, a strong, loud, and maybe sometimes irritating voice really? on that, on you that do, cause. You seem very, very calm at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that, not for a <laughs> second. <laughs> but uh, you, of course, you know, um, you, going into politics is, is quite challenging. And following off from this case that we have been talking about this morning, a lot of uh, the Sikh community will, of course, be feeling quite a passion towards politics. And for those people, those budding people who want to become politicians, what advice, what final advice can you give to them? Well, I think uh, there's a real issue here. Um, young people uh, have not been as involved in politics and voting and political parties as they should be. And there's becoming, uh, you know, there are consequences to that. If you look at the way the deficit has uh, been reduced and so on. Largely, the position of older people has been protected. All the pensions, all the benefits. Yes. Um, and one of the reasons for that is older people are more likely to vote. Mm -hmm. So governments of any party are very consciously aware of uh, the power of older people's vote. Young people, who, if young people take the view, well, it doesn't matter to me and I'm not interested, yes. and it's, um, that's having consequences because I don't want to be too partisan here, but the government has felt very free to reduce uh, benefits for young people, to take away educational maintenance allowances and do things like that. They felt very free to uh, reduce benefits and services to hardworking families uh, with children who are really struggling to make ends meet. Uh, and part of the reason is this disparity in who votes and who doesn't. So I think it's really important that young people get involved. And in terms of the Sikh community, I think for all the pain of the issue that we've been talking about this morning, one of the things that has been shown in recent days is that when an issue of importance rises, people will raise it. Politics is a vehicle for yes. raising the issue, asking the right questions, doing so in a fully open, democratic way. You know, newspapers uh, reporting this in full and discussing it. I think all of that shows uh, that we are a democracy that can ask some tough questions. And that's really, really important. Because when there are tough questions, there's got to be a peaceful, democratic, law-abiding way of pressing for answers. And that's what we've got in the UK, and we're very lucky to have that. We are lucky indeed. Um, so I will encourage uh, all, everyone to uh, hopefully get involved in politics and, of course, to pay attention to politics, especially at this time. And I mean, uh, lastly, uh, Pat, I, do, I did have a bit of a, a quiz prepared for you, but we're running out of time, in fact. That might so be lucky <laughs> for me. I'm very spared lucky the for quiz. you indeed, Easy. yes. Uh, but I will ask you one question, and this is about uh, the constituency of Wolverhampton, of course, which is your constituency. Um, what is the city's motto? What is that? Uh, what's the, the city's motto what's is, the motto? out of darkness cometh light. Mm. Absolutely perfect. Yes, that uh, was the motto. And I will ask you one other question. Um, who actually founded the city? Well, um, the term Wolfrunian uh, goes, back to, goes back to the Middle Ages and yes. uh, the famous Lady Wolfram from then. 
Well, I shall ask you no more. You seem to know uh, exactly what you're talking about and exactly uh, everything about Wolverhampton, which is absolutely brilliant. You get top marks for that. And in fact, uh, we do have a gift for you, uh, which we would like to give, which uh, Sikh Channel has uh, given to you. It's a lovely book about uh, Sikh warriors. So we do hope. Uh, we know that we do love reading. and, and of course, I do. Uh, I'm very honoured. Thank you very much. Boli so nihal. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. तो जी हम समा समाप्त है समा जाच नहीं दिता बहुत सारिया होर भी गल् पता कर नहीं सी और खास तौर पर उन्नीस सौ चौरासी की नाइनटीन एटी फोर की गल करते हैं मिस्टर पैट ने भी जो क्वेश्चन राइज किए और बदले जो उन्होंने एक आश्वासन दिता डेविड कैमरन ने उन्होंने भी कहा भी अभी अं इनकुरी करावे और उन्होंने भी कहा भी सूँ बड़ा हर्ट हो क्योंकि उन जो फस्ट वर्ल्ड वार और सैकेंड वर्ल्ड वार भी सिखा ने बहुत वीयी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन की तिरासी हज़ार तो ज़्यादा वो सिख सोल्जर जोड़े से शहीद होए थी तो ये वास्ते बहुत जल्द इनकुरी होएगी सच सामने आएगा तो अज असी शो के इस बारे गलबात की असी एक बार फिर जोड़ा एम पी जे पैट मैं थैंक्स करते हैं जी to the breakfast yes. show once more and we will uh, quiz you again on your constituency i think i think that should be a uh, very interesting to see as well and i will uh, i will give you a bit of a hint i think next time you come on the show we'll ask you about uh, the seat community the famous faces in the seat community so uh, you can research and revise on that for now got to do my homework <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, uh, you can do your homework there. But uh, mm. thank you again for joining us. And of course, now it is the end of the show. You can watch the recap uh, of the breakfast show tomorrow, Saturday at 9 a.m., where you can see all of the highlights of the breakfast show. And uh, you can catch us again on Monday, 7 a.m. live, the breakfast show. So, what do you think about this? Is it a channel? Wahe Guruji ka Khalsa, Wahe Guruji ki Fateh.